when did you like i guess kind of start to look into um not not so much like the adaptive collegiate golf but like getting into the adaptive open and then you also played in the vision cup too correct mm-hmm. yeah so i guess how did you kind of get into like i guess learning how did you like get involved in those yeah so it was really funny actually this whole thing happened the year after i lost my sight and so being able to get involved in all these tournaments happened accidentally because mm-hmm. when i joined the u of a my dad was looking into other tournaments just you know around the country just seeing what there was yeah. and then I had played originally in the 2020 um, North and South Junior Amateur. I got enough points in my junior organization that I was allowed to go to Pinehurst in 2020 during COVID, which is really good. I played number two. So I'm like, I played horribly as well. (laughs) Like, I don't know how they let me go (laughs) because I definitely wasn't a great golfer back then. But, um, so I played there, but my it was on my dad's radar. Like Pinehurst is always on my dad's radar. And so he saw that they're doing the USGA Adaptive Open. And he's like, you know, maybe we can do that. Because it was at Pinehurst awesome. and I've had yeah. a history of Pinehurst. And it's just, it was all kind of like falling together really perfectly. It was weird. Casual flex. Yeah. Casual flex. Yeah. Yeah, it's really Pinehurst. You know, it's really not a big no, deal. It's fine. I'm going to tell you this. I shot 92, which isn't for, you know, being a high school golfer going to play yeah. Pinehurst. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a terrible score, but I was so unhappy with it. You shot under 100 like, on a on a world-renowned course as a, as a high school <laughs> student. You, you stop. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, but, you know, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. We we are yeah. not we we can't I bet you would kick our ass right now like we <laughs> that's crazy that's so sick. <laughs> what was the uh, the best part of going? Because the Vision Cup was in Paris this past year too. What was it like just getting yeah. over there and, and playing some of those courses? Oh, yeah, I think it was in uh, it was in Vienna, um, Austria, oh, oh, okay. which no, yeah, good because it was it's probably really confusing with the Paralympics happening right now. Um, yeah. But for the for the Vision Cup, it was really cool because I had a feeling that I'd be able to go because I'm one of like the only women blind golfers in the U.S. at least. In Canada, there's a couple more. Um, so it was really cool getting the call to go, and basically, like, it was we played the practice round, which was really fun, but also really stressful because it started all hitting, and it was like. You know, playing, I've never played in a team event. That is something yeah. normally I'm, it's on my own. And, you know, I, if I play bad, that's on me. And I only have me to blame. And there's only me to let down. It just, you know, it goes on and on. But with a team event, it's different because having other people rely on your skills is totally different. Um, mm-hmm. It adds a whole other level of stress, which I'm okay with stress, but at the same time, it's very hard to manage and to be able to um, deal with when you're only 20 years old. So playing was really awesome, but also I was like shaking the whole time. (laughs) Like even (laughs) thinking about it, I'm like, oh my God. But I can't wait to go back. Um, In two years, I think we'll be in Canada and I'm really excited for that. What was the format for the event then? Was it, was it best ball or was it, alternate stroke it was match play so um it was the pinehurst match play i believe it's called i'm not totally sure of the exact name but the way it goes is that your teammate and you you both hit drives but then you switch and they hit your Mm -hmm. drive and you hit their drive and then you pick the best shot from that second shot wow so it was really nice because I played with someone who, you know, I was driving it in the middle most of the time, like, and I'm playing from the red tees. So, you know, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's just crushing yeah, it. Yeah, for like, them. Oh, yeah, just, I guess I'll take this 40-yard shot and it's fine. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I know that one of the big ones for, so the um, Adaptive Open that was out here in Kansas, uh, you mm-hmm. shot – 
from what I've, I I think we talked about this. Well, at least TJ and I did because we couldn't believe it. We had to double check and triple check. You shot a seventy one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how um, I did that. <laughs> what? You want to talk about that? That's ball is status. Yeah. What are we doing? Oh, my God. So the first two days were so rough for me. Um, back in Hawaii, I was when I was playing nines and 18s, I was shooting like mid-70s, like high to mid-70s. And that was fine. Like I was like, oh, wow, this is good for me. Like normally I was playing 80s and stuff before this. And if you can check my previous rounds at Pinehurst for the last two years, I was shooting 80s wasn't breaking 70 like 79 like what no way um but i remember on the podcast with ricky last time i was really upset with the 85 that i had shot um and i was in eighth place so i was kind of really i was really bummed out and i didn't think that that was my game and that was a reflection of my game so the next day i kind of had just like no expectations and my dad was like you made it through like you're still your own you're the only person in your category like you know it's whatever <laughs> so <laughs> i played really loosely and it kind of worked out because i started parring and birding the first like six holes and i was like it wasn't in my head fully most times my score is in my head when i make nine and 18 but since i can't see the scorecard it is so nice to not have to <laughs> see your scorecard you wouldn't even believe the amount of times that, like, I will glance at my dad and, like, I won't see the scores because, you know, you can't read them. It's really That's great. So <laughs> and so for me, and I have, like, I have ADHD, and, like, so I forget what I shoot all the time. Like, I'm, like, I didn't even, sometimes I don't even know what I shoot on the hole that I just played. So not Same. remembering <laughs> all of <laughs> Not remembering all of like the holes that I've had and the shots that I've done really helped just be able to just have my mind be focusing on like the next one. And I know it's really like cringe to say like, oh, just keep your focus on the next shot. But like for me, it kind of worked somehow. Mm -hmm. Normally it doesn't. But no, coming into 18, I think, no, 17 actually, I was two under. So I was actually 70. Um, and it was a par three, the 17th hole. I think I bogeyed it. <laughs> I got all the green and I three putted, which wasn't good, but I knew I was okay. I thought I was shooting 76 right then and there. Mm. So I was like 78, 78, 78, 77, whatever. And then walking off of 18, um, one of the volunteers that was actually from Hawaii, he came up to me and he was like, you did an incredible round, like 71. And I'm like, I like looked at my dad, I'm like, huh? <laughs> I was, I was really confused because I, I actually had no idea that I was shooting that low. And um, like, yeah, my dad was really happy for me that day. That's incredible. Yeah. That's yeah, so no. crazy. Thank I probably you. Be the same way. Was... I probably run the same way. Like if I, <laughs> I think I would have blacked out. I also have ADHD. So it's like, it's sometimes he's yeah. like, what did you get in the hole? And I'm like, we're teeing off on the next one. I don't care about the last one. I don't even remember. But it's, it's like, yeah. it's one of those things where, like you said, uh, it really is like just focusing on the next one. Cause golf, I mean, you've, you've said mm -hmm. all of this a couple of times, but like golf is such a mental sport and it's such of like, it's do or die by like your efforts. So it's like, if you have a bad shot, yeah. you can't get, get in your head about it like too much. And you just have yeah. to go to the next one every single time you have to limit it. So the fact that you didn't even know <laughs> that you were like seven strokes off of what you thought you shot is incredible. Yeah, no, it was actually really crazy because, um, like, I <laughs> on that hole too is I drove the green, I drove over the green, um, so the 18th hole is like a 240 yard hole, and so somehow, and I'm playing from purple tees, not red tees, but they're like one ahead of it, so mm -hmm. I think on all three days I was able to drive just near around the green, and, um, it definitely saved me so that I didn't have to like approach into the green, which is mm -hmm. nice. But yeah, no, I like I still can't even believe it. Sometimes I'm like, it definitely feels weird that I did. And now I'm shooting like mid seventies and maybe yesterday I actually shot eighty four, but it was a hard course. Um but no, yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> like just knowing how well that I can do and what my potential yes. is. 
um, because being like an 80s shooter for the last like six years of my life kind of like let me, it was a letdown. And it was kind of like, ugh, like, you know, it's not, it's never fun, but also at the same time, like it's golf, you know, it happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's, uh, what's next for you then? Like after college and maybe like what's coming up for you in adaptive golf? Yeah. Everyone's been asking me when I'm hosting an adaptive event in Hawaii. I think I get that question <laughs> more often, um, every single tournament that I go to. And so that's my next goal to do is to learn from different people of how to host events because I want to do it good. If I'm going to host an event in Hawaii, I want good fundra fundraising. I want the best course for mm -hmm. all the accessible, um, like all the good accessible features. And um, I just want to do it right. So having my communication degree will help me in that. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> which is nice. That's probably the next thing that I'm going to do after college. And then I want to work with either the USGA or the RNA, the Royal and Ancient Golf Club. Mm -hmm. I yeah. got actually, um, I think I got into contact with the USGA. It was one of the officials who works with them. And he, I talked to him. And he was like, yeah, get, send me an email, like with all your contact information. And I told him like all of like my story and my major that I wanted to be in their internship program. So yeah. I'm in contact with one of their talent acquisitions for that. So hopefully I can start building up my resume to be able to work with like big organizations. For yeah, heck yeah. You have to let us know if there's a, you know, if you're going to do an adaptive tournament in Hawaii, you know, oh, if there's yeah. like, you know, like sponsored players or like, you know, people that just come in to support, we, we, you know, yeah. maybe we could make it out. You know, it's Hawaii. I think we can. Oh make it out. my God. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I think be like, sick. cause I want this whole tournament. I want it to be big because like it's everyone's anticipation because like being from Hawaii, it's just like everyone has an expectation mm -hmm. and they're like tournament and I'm like let me get out of college first right. <laughs> let me graduate let me so start my life enough on your plate. but right. yeah no, but I'm excited I'm really excited to learn how to do all of these things and to be able to learn from like the best of the best who make these tournaments and to work with them I think would be a really like cool opportunity yeah yeah no doubt sure. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.